Good evening everyone and welcome to FPRL Tier 2 Race at Canada. Looking very sunny today. Uh, this is our round 3 and it is our first sprint race of the season. Uh, I'm your host, Clatter Ads, joined by... Ross an idiot. Yep, so first time back at Canada. I'm pretty sure we didn't have this one last season. Um... This is the 14 corners, very, very low traction track. Um, so setup wise around here is going to be very, very important. Um, of course, let's talk about setup. Obviously, you've got two sections of the track quite fast and the rest of the track are obviously slow, slow to medium fast corners. Um, what do you reckon which way direction people are going to go with setup? Do you reckon it's going to be more balanced or do you think you'll see people with a more higher downforce i'd say it's probably going to be towards the more balance just slightly maybe to the higher side you know maybe in around that 30 to 35 range would be their wings i would say just helps them along the back uh, the back straight and this other drs zone but it's so crucial these middle chicanes three of them that we have around here just to have that downforce get the car planted allows you to get on the par so early and it's so much crucial lap time you can find in the two qualifying sessions that we will have tonight yeah we got a couple of people out obviously gonna be coming out on um mediums um you got q1 at the moment so everyone will be i believe it'll be is it medium hards and softs q1 and two and three well we've only got the one qualifying session for the oh, okay and the main race so it should only be a set of softs ideally would do them for here to save the mediums for the sprint race itself yeah so we've got to make sure of people on the grid with softs and mediums just following around with the mercedes of yorkie uh just coming out of the fast first sector now drs section this is the first one of the lap apart from uh, second one of the lap, sorry. There's three uh, three DRS zones around here. Uh, just coming into its end of sector two now. Coming up to the back straight. See, it's purple sector. He's the first one out on the grid. Um, let's take a look at his top end speed cross grid. Let's see what he's going to do. How would how do you approach? Um, just tell our, uh, the viewers how do you approach this last corner? It's probably one of the most difficult corners throughout the calendar. Yeah, it's, if anything, I'd say it's the most difficult corner in the whole calendar that we have. You just have to approach it with so much aggression. It's where you can make or break a lap. We've seen already the tier threes this week. You know, guys are losing near half a second just because they don't have the confidence that others do. It seemed there, Yorkie, you know, he's went nice and smooth through it, you know. Still lap time there to be gained, but you know, he's got his lap on the board. Next time, sorry, next time round, he'll be able to push a bit more. It's so easy to get corner cutting on it, though, so... As we see, Groundsy at ten two, so that's already a great start for him. Yeah, just it's going to be crucial. Try to get as much of that curb as you can without getting a corner cut, and you'll find so much time. Yeah, I was just looking at the tyres selection. A lot of people have gone for the medium, so there's only four drivers out here that have gone on the soft. So we'd expect people to start on the soft tyres during the sprint. Just had TJ come across the line with a 111-1. A lot more time there he can improve on. It's nearly nine temps down on Groundsy. Um, first laps are all coming in now. Cruz is going for, looks like he's going for a second run. Now coming around turn one, two, up the hill to turn three. Very fast part of the turkey. Turn three and four, you want to try and do is click them because try and get as close to that wall as you can to gain the momentum coming out of that. Corner, coming in the end of sector one now. Yellow flags in front. Pretty stable there by Cruz. Uh, Cruz is having a bit, bit of a comeback. Cross he had a very, very good result um, last race. Had a difficult couple, uh, difficult first race for him, but um, made his way back in race two. Sadly, that wasn't the case for him last week. He had another DNF oh, actually. Yeah, um, two DNFs from two after such a promising pre-season. So, well, I think everybody. I really I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably thinking of someone else. <laughs> I can't remember who it was now. Yeah, My bad. Sorry, Cross. Uh, sorry, Cruz. <laughs> not the, same, the start of the season he'd be looking for. To be honest, I thought he would have been a good championship contender. He still is. 
So maybe he needs to just kick it off here in Canada. And with that time of 10-1, it looks like he is starting to show that. Hopefully this will let him yeah. kick on. Yeah, that's not a bad time on the mediums. It looks like... I can't really see who's on the soft tyres at the moment. Who's actually done a decent time. Diamond's on the soft, but he's down in P8 with a 110.6. Squid's the first man into the 1.9s with a 109.8. Uh, got Lexus, Noah Bidley all on track now. Uh, got Gary's invalidated his lap. Has he invalidated his lap? Yes, he has. Yes, he has. So a lot of people are invalidating their laps. Got Fardo now getting a nice slipstream off that Ferrari coming across the line. 110 at 9 for him. So that puts him up into the top 10, just surpassing TJ. Uh, TJ's um, three and a bit temps up on his lap. So this is going to put him in around the Eagle Rumaster position. Uh, let's see how well he's done with his battery. Plenty of battery coming across the line. So yes, yeah, so, um, so he's put him up to just behind Eagle. 110.5 and Diamond's decided to retire. Diamond's had enough already. An interesting one, maybe he's just happy enough with the time, just trying to save tyres. Maybe he's thinking on more of the main race, if anything, sprint. It's a weird one to be calling with what, about five and a half minutes to go. Still plenty of time to set up a good lap, you know, still plenty of time to find plenty of grip to be found on this yeah. track as well, as Noah sets a 10 dead. Yeah, brilliant lap by the McLaren there, uh, and that's on his second run, so uh, obviously little used tyres, but yeah, pretty solid a lap there, up into P2. Uh, just take us through with the viewers with Biddle, just coming into the end of Sector 2. Yeah, so just past the second DRS zone, coming up towards the chicane of 8 and 9, it's very easy to cut the inside curve, but he he's probably got away with most of it than he could have, you know, it's probably any more inside he would have been invalidated as we come up towards the hairpin brick slightly late going to hamper him on exit just a bit later on the part as he gets his overtake on he's not going to get any help here from the v car they are as we take our time all the way down to the final chicane it is going to be make or break will he have a car in the way it looks like the car's getting well out of the way before he gets in how aggressive does he take it takes that inside curve very aggressive second curves just loosened up on the rear as we get flat out to the line it's going to be a 10 three so that's Still a bit messy in the last second, but still P8 for Biddley. He'll be happy enough with that being, what, half a second off? Yep, so um, obviously we all know, but the viewers may not if they watch it for the first time. Obviously this is the sprint qualifying, so this is a sprint race. Um, this will determine um, your grid stop for the sprint race, and then wherever you finish um, in the sprint race will determine your position. Uh, where you start in the race. Um, You've been playing too much F2. It's all changed it this year, I? yeah. Do we have <laughs> another qualifying session after our sprint race? Oh, okay. We have another so, 18 minutes for guys to see how much time they can get out of this track. Okay, so don't listen to me. To cross <laughs> uh, so, yes, so we have a sprint race and then we have another qualifying now for the main race. So, but you do pick up points um, for the first. So I think First eight. top top eight all get points, so it will all help towards the championship towards the end. So you won't. I, I very doubt you see people risk it so much in the in the sprint. Do you think you'll see people more using it as a, a testing session, ready for the main race where all the points are won? Yeah, you know, it's, to me, a sprint is just see how your race pace is. You know, it's eight points up for grabs, obviously for the winner. So, if you look at it in the long run, it's not too much compared to what it is for every main race that we have. So, normally I just try to go into it easy and just, as long as I can finish and show a half decent race pace, I'd be happy enough personally. So, maybe that's what these guys need to just go into it. Obviously, you've got the guys at the top like Squid and Noah, they'll be trying to push for a win at the pace that they're showing at the minute. But what do we have? Two and a half minutes, and we have basically everybody, nearly everybody on the right laps are starting their final laps. Yep, so I'm just going to go around with Monkey now, and the horse just coming up to the start line now to start his lap. Coming into turn one and two. Going to make his way up the hill, very low traction corner this is. Um, coming into turn three, which is slightly downhill into turn four. Takes him curves very nicely. 
plenty of room on the right hand side turn five and turn six coming up and here you want to just try and click that corner and that one and try and make your way over to that wall obviously not try and get too much because you can end up sliding into that wall um, and damaging your front wing um, I quite like these two corners coming up you just want to click that inside curb um, and try and point your car towards the outside curb on the right hand side Monkey's coming up to the end of sector two now let's have a look at his split time 41.9 so it's reasonably good he's going to get a slight is he going to get a slight slipstream camera angles a bit who let's have a look where is it no he's decided not to take a slight slipstream the alfa romeo or the kick salvo gets out of the way coming into uh turn 13 and 14 uh next to the wall of champions plenty of astro there he took straight to the line it is a one at ten seven so it's only fast enough for p14 um we've got gary and mongo the only ones who haven't done a um fast lap yet and gary's pretty down in sector two 42 7 cross screen not very good showing by gary at the moment yeah it seems like he just doesn't have the confidence in the car at the minute as we say that though he throws it over the last chicane with so much confidence as he gets his way to the line so at least he will get a time on the board it's going to be a 10 9 down in p16 obviously not what he is looking but he's got still plenty of time before we get on to the main qualifying session where the big points are landed yeah, we've got a couple of people that are up. We've got Rewmasters up 10th and a half. Uh, purple Sector's just been done by Oblaf. Um, Liam's three and a half temps up, so he's decided to go on to the soft tyre. Um, I think a lot of people now are on the soft tyre. Um, let's follow Cruz coming into the end of Sector 2 now. Let's see his split time. We've got Groundsy taking provisional pole at the minute, 195. Eagle and Squid have decided to retire. Cruz is down. Uh, next across the line at these top 10 people is going to be Snower. Let's see how we can take turn 13, 14. Very aggressive there. Oh, he's hit the wall of champions. Broke a bit of the wing. Um, and it's going to affect his exit. So he gets out of the way of the asphalt in. So he's not going to improve. But we have Roommaster, like I said. He's gone up to P3. And Biddle, brilliant lap by Biddle, up into p Six or one oh nine nine. Oblaf Racing goes up to P at one with a one nine three. Brilliant lap by him. We got Fardo's down. Uh, let's have a look at Liam. More leaders down. Sorry. Hey. Sorry, no, the dog just. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, and Liam's about a tenth up on his time. So to get into that top of six, it needs about. About two and a half temps, three temps. Let's see if he's very aggressive in these last two corners now. And he's taking a very tight line coming into turn 13. Straight to the line now. And I think he's invalidated his lap and he has slowed down. So, cross read, that is it for Iowa Sprint Race Qualified. Yeah, it's good to see the guys are already at the low nines and around that stage. I think it's nine point, yeah, nine point three in your sprint qualifying. So you could maybe look at some guys being in the eights, the quick guys maybe in the eights for our main qualifying. But now eight points up for grabs. Eagle obviously got a podium last week, P two, so he's already kicking or starting in a good position for there. Look down the grid, Cruiser obviously after his two weeks he'd be probably happy enough with P eight, especially being set on the mediums. Still plenty of time to be found by him, and hopefully he'll move on. Yep, a lot of people went from mediums to soft. Uh, we got down the bottom. We got Diamond Douche, Yorkie, and Gary all deciding to just take one set of softs. And uh, Gary saying in chat, um, he was bleep. Four laps and tyres were gone, and that at that point, so he decided to do all these laps on one set of tyres. And Sunny Canada then goes to the lovely downpour of North America. So that cross green looks very wet. Yeah, but, that's probably not what the guys were wanting already in the dry. It's so hard on traction zones and corner cut, and this is just going to make it ten times as hard, especially with the spray going to be kicking up at the cars in front. Probably. Probably hoping enough that these guys, sorry, these guys are probably hoping that the main race is going to stay dry and it's not going to be like this. If that's the case, then they should all be on dry setups. 
So this could be a very interesting sprint race of what I believe is 12 laps. Yep, 12, uh, 12 long, long laps this is going to be. Um, it's going to be even less traction now out of these uh, corners. Um, anyone caught your eye in that qualifying? I was quite impressed with Remaster. Got himself up into there at the last minute, up into the top three. Anyone surprised you there? Yeah, I was actually happy enough to see Remaster up there. I know from previous seasons he's had pace and it just seems like it hasn't been able to carry that over. But hopefully this is a turn for him. He's able to keep up with this here, then I'd like to see him try to get some points this week. It'd be nice to see. Obviously, there's some guys down at the back of the field. It just doesn't seem like they've been able to push on from what they have on pre-season. So some of them, I would like to see them try to get up, just grab some points at least, try to do something for them. Yeah, especially with the changeable conditions. Uh, we could uh, see an unsurprising winner here. Um, does Park Ferme... Uh, 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 can they change the car after this? I am pretty I can't sure. Remember if they, it if is. they could or not. Park Verme is for the sprint, and then it resets for the race. I think not a hundred percent sure, but I think that might be the case for them. So they should be able to get away with it, setting up a wet car, and then Obelaf racing already hits the wall. So it just shows on the formation lap how challenging these conditions are already going to be. Yeah, we've got Mongo out of the bag absolutely sliding all over the place, trying to get his tyres warm to lock ice out there. It is full wet at the moment. I can um, say that though, interestingly, Gary and Lexus, 16, 17, taking a risk, both starting on intermediates. Yeah, well, they've got nothing to lose back at, um, at the back, P16, P15. It may lighten up, we never know. So they may have uh, taken the slow game at first, but then obviously everyone else at the front is going to have to pit. Um, but let's see. So let's go through the grid quickly. If you do the bottom 10, that'd be great, cross grid. Yeah, so very quickly we have Mongo, P19, two Ferraris of Hirsch and Lexus sitting P18, P17. Gary sitting P16, Monkey Boy P15, uh, Yorkie P14, uh, Diamond Dushi in the Alpine P13. TJ, P12, um, more leader, P11. And uh, then we got Liam uh, in P10 in the red ball. We've got Fardo, P9. We've got Cruz and Noah have hit each other at some point, so they've been disqualified. And we've got TJ and Yorkie both have been disqualified too. Oh, wonder how that happened. Got B Biddle in P6, um, Squid in P5. We've got Rumars in P4, Eagle in P3. We've got Ground Z in P2 and Oblaf in P1. And not a good start by Fardo. Can you quickly get Fardo in? Uh, send him an yeah. invite, Crossgrey. He's just left. So anyone who starts behind Fardo, please be careful. He is going to be AI at the present moment. We've got Gary at the back who's disqualified too, so he's obviously missed his grid box. Um, but Oblaf has... He's pointing his car to the right slightly with Groundsy pointing slightly left. So, four lights, five lights. Go! And a very slow start by Groundsy. Oblaf gets a brilliant start. Groundsy's under pressure now by Roommaster around the outside. And the guys keep the key on. The McLaren of Eagle hit the Red Bull. And uh, you've got McLaren 5 and 6 at the minute. You've got Biddles taking a really good start up to P6. So he's managed to get past Noah. Noah's gone backwards. Got more lead and Cruz battling here. Looks like a very, very good first lap here. We've got TJ up in P11. Monkey's had a brilliant start up in P12. Diamond Doof P13. Gary in the intermediate ties up into P14. Yorkie P15 has gone down a couple of places. Fardo P16, obviously he's in the AI, so everyone's trying to push their way through. I think he is ghosted. I'm not 100% sure, but please be careful. But Oblaf, uh, at a minute, uh, cross screen is pulling away. 1.1 seconds. Yeah, crucially, that was the start he needed. He's already 1.2 seconds ahead of Groundsy. Going to see so much battling now between what looks like it's going to be P2 onwards. We see already Gary and Lexus, P14, P16. Uh, together so it looks like maybe the mentors are going to work slightly better than the wets at the minute yeah yep. we got battling at the back between mongo lexus and hirsch when the camera angle decides to change uh pretty spread out already at the moment got a bit all, all over the back of eagle about half a second behind he's in the mclaren sandwich at the moment oblaf at the minute 
on wet tyres, takes the fastest lap. He's even pulling away even more. He's gained 1.5 seconds, if not on one lap. And um, we got Yorkie, uh, obviously with slight wing damage. Uh, no, he's decided to pit for intermediate. So I wonder if Gary and the other people who started intermediate got it right. Yorkie's pitting for intermediate. Yeah, maybe he's made the absolute right call. Unless I know that Yorkie, I think it was, had a slight bit of contact with Diamond Dushy. Might have put him into the wall to give him slight wing damage and in this rain. It's just not worth having that slight wing damage. So maybe he's just taking the risk. Trying to get on the enters early. And if we do get a bit drier and everybody has to box, then he's going to get a massive undercut by the time that happens. Yeah, through the end of Sector 1, we had Monkey go slightly wide. Um, and he lost traction. He has lost a couple of places now to the Ferrari of Lexus and Gary. Oh, Silverside Boys up into P13. He is now on the back of a Diamond Douche. I wonder if Gary's going to take the lunch here. Yes, he is. No, he decided to back out of it. Um, but the intermediate tyres are looking great on his car at the moment. Very hard to see at the minute with the spray. Uh, we can hardly see any cars. Um, but let's go back up to the top of the field. We have Oblaf still pulling away at 2.2 seconds. He's absolutely loving this um, these conditions at the minute. And uh, it's now it's taking up the first three second penalty after three laps. Uh, Grounds, he's settling in P2 now with Remaster under pressure from um, Squid in the Red Bull. Red Bull. Uh, you've got Eagle and Biddle slightly behind. And then you've got a big gap to Noah. Two seconds, which is very under pressure from the RB of <coughs> Cruz and more leader of the Williams. Yeah, TJ we just, is. No, oh, continue cross three. Sorry. sorry, we just um, just before Noah had picked up his penalty, Cruz were all around the back end of him, going down the back straight. Cruz was trying to go left down the back straight, showing the wall by Noah. Slight contact does look like he's got away with it, but he's just Noah's under so much pressure here. Cruiser is dying to get past him to show so much more pace than this McLaren driver at the minute. There we got Williams going wide there, more leader. Um, we've got TJ just slightly stuck behind this. It's the closest battle on track. Got Gary going up the inside of, uh, oh, the outside of Diamond Dude. Do Diamond Dude, oh, he nearly hits TJ in the running. Diamond squeezing Gary out wide. That's going to give Lexus of the Ferrari a good run in on Gary going up into turn 13 and 14. Let's see who's got the best pace and energy to pull up here. Uh, it's like Gary's going to stick it out and Lex is going to stick it out and stay where they are for the moment. So, yeah, this is at the moment you've got Room Masters actually been passed by um, Squids. Squids on the rise. Uh, he, again, is loving his conditions. He's got um, eight laps to try and catch um, Ground Z for P2. Fiddle's dropped off the back of Eagle at the moment. Um, but there you go. Intermediate tyres, 122.6. Maybe this is the crossover um, that was needed. And we may see. Um, Immediately start coming into play. Yeah, it looks like Gary and Lexus have made the right call. All they need is just for this rain, just to die off that slight bit uh, more. As we see the two intermediate guys setting the faster laps. Maybe two, three more laps time. We're seeing these wet runners all coming into the box, and we see Gary and Lexus get so much of a lead that they should be technically a one-two, no problem. Yeah, at the minute, uh, Yorkie, he's, he's about, he pitted um, second lap. Um, he's only 10 seconds off this fighting lot now. So he has caught up about five, six seconds the last couple of laps. So it does look like the intermediate tyres are working. Gary's managed, uh, Silverside Boys managed to get past Diamond Douche, but there's a move up the grid with Liam getting past Noah. And we have Cruz in the pit, so he's coming in. Um, he's going to get rid of them wet tyres. So, yep. Yeah. Starting on the wet tyres obviously wasn't wasn't a good decision at the moment. Um, person that looks like he's in for the win at the minute. Let's double check the tyres situation. Gary at the minute is going to be in the net lead. Yeah, it looks like that's going to be the case. But as we see, Oblaf setting a slight bit of faster time. So we do see the track is getting remarkably drier lap by lap. It's just a matter of when. Does it get too dry for these wet tyres? We can see Oblaf's just slightly sliding all over the place. Maybe the tyres are getting a bit too cold. 
maybe it is this time. Maybe just take your medicine, get on the enters, and just try to make up as big a gap as you can back to Lexus and Gary. Yeah, York, Yorkie pitted early and he's managed to jump crew. So he actually jumped up seven positions because he's um, pitted early. So it is the right time to come in intermediate tyres. So we're just going to be waiting on the lead lot to see where they slot in. Um, but again, you've got people like Oblaf and Roommaster all going to get stuck behind each other in the pits. Um, so they're going to want to try and create a gap. Eagle is putting the Aston Martin under a lot of pressure at the moment. Um, only seven tenths behind. Slightly wide. They nearly hit the wall of champions. That's lost about three tenths going on to the main straight. We have Liam in the pits. He's obviously going for the intermediate tyres also with six laps left. Monkey Boy, he, he's up into P10. Um, so he's he settled down after the first couple of laps. Made himself up into 10th position alongside his teammate uh, with TJ and P9. TJ has a wide moment now. He's going to be under pressure for Monkey coming into turn three. And the horse boy's going to give each other room. Oh no, there's a bit of wheel bashing there. Gary's right behind and you also got the two fries also fighting position here. Lovely racing so far by the gents. Silverside boy's got, oh, Silverside boy's tapped the back of Monkey. Um, yeah, fierce fighting here. Yeah, very fierce fighting between the two house guys. Probably something they really shouldn't be doing as teammates. But Gary in behind and Lexus are going to be raging as we see Gary, or sorry, Lexus down the inside of Gary trying to take the position. He really hasn't given Gary any room, so Gary really had to cut the corner, but he does give that position back to Lexus, even though I would say Gary deserved it. But he's lost out on Hirsch now, so the two Ferraris getting through the V carbs. Yeah, going back to these two houses, they might need to sort this out. One of them might have to go into oh, the box this last. Oh, we got crash. Gary's in the wall. Gary's in the wall. Um, I think it was a touch of wheels of Hirsch and Gary coming into the chicane part, and they just were turning into each other and just couldn't let go of each other. Um, so that would have... And Fardo's retired from the race. 10-second penalty for Noah for speeding the pitch also. So, um, yeah. Gary's lost, kind of lost the net lead now, and I wonder if he's got wing damage from going into the wall. Yeah, we will have a look on board with Gary. Obviously, he hasn't came into the pit, so if he does have damage, it is going to be very slight. But it does look like he's got away with it. Um, just with Bardo, he's just got the retirement. He couldn't take control of his car, so he's tried to leave and come back, but it's just retired him. So it's very unlucky for him. We have near enough a four-car battle as the Haas near enough slams oh. on the brakes. Oh, TJ's got no front wing. He's got no front wing. Where did that happen? I wonder if he's lost it coming into the wall of champions. He's coming onto that back straight. He had a front wing and he no longer has. Oh dear. Maybe this is where the two house guys should have just maybe calmed the nerves down a bit and just took their, <laughs> sorry, took their time. Try not to fight because obviously now it's just cost them. Yep, and Gary's back on the move now. He's re-passed Hirsch for P10. So he didn't lose too much time there. Um, so he's gained momentum and he's come back and he's up into the top 10. Monkey's sitting nicely into P9 just behind Mongo. Lexus uh, in the throw. He's made a brilliant start of the Grand Prix. He's made himself up to P7. He's got a massive gap to Biddle. Biddle's having a nice little lonely race there in P6. No worry from behind. TJ's also got a 10-second penalty. Um, but Biddle is chasing down Eagle. Eagle still has not been able to get past Roommaster. Um, Squid hasn't been able to close that gap to Groundsy up the top. Um, but Oblaf and Groundsy staying around the 3.4 seconds. Yeah, we had Hirsch there at the Wall of Champions. Just spin it. It does look like he's got away with it. But interestingly, though... <laughs> Oblaf and Groundsy are still happy enough on these set of wets. We're looking, <coughs> Lexus is 21, 22 seconds behind them. So it would be quite tight between the two if they do decide to box. So it'll be worthwhile keeping an eye on that gap if it does come down. But at the rate it needs to come down, it's near 5, 6 seconds a lap. Maybe at this rate, maybe the enters. She just won't be able to do it at that time. Yeah, all the early bo uh, box people of Cruz and at Yorkie have now catched up the back of a Silverside boy who are, is going to be on them eight lap old um, intermediate tyres. Um, so, yeah, and it still does look like they are still catching uh, Monkey in front, just ever so slightly. Um, but yeah, unfortunate for TJ. Front wing damage, 10 second penalty. Uh, not a very good sprint um, race for him, but we can all reset. 
um, and he can reset Sawyer and go for a good result in the race. On board there with Liam just out of the wall of champion chicane. Just lost the rear end, but he has been able to save it. But at the minute, it looks like it's just going to be the simple well, sorry, it should be a simple race now for Oblav to get uh, to the finish. Just has to take care of the car on the way home with just under four seconds of a gap as TJ picks up another three seconds. And that's going to be really a case to keep an eye out for. We've seen it on Monday night. Every driver had penalties at the time, and we just didn't know who was going to finish anywhere really. We won the lookout for in the main race, and if you can stay penalty free, you know, you could be getting up three, four positions. Yeah, let's have a look at the position changes actually. Let's see who's got the wooden spoon and who's actually done the best start. So we've got Lexus and Monka both up 11th and 10 places. Uh, Monkey Gary up, up six places. Um, you've got Yorkie up three. Obviously, we've got It's Noah who's had a terrible start from P7. Um, he's made his way down into P17 um, and we've also got Morley who's dropped down five positions. Uh, we've got Cruz and uh, Yorkie of the Mercedes and RB now fighting for 11th and 12th. Morley has now picked up itself another three second penalty. So a lot of the people um, currently have penalty situation. Let's have a look. So yeah, we've got Diamond and Hirsch both on three. Rue Masters on three. Got Morley on 13. I was on 16 and TJ's on 13, but I think 10 of them are all from the pit stops. So at the minute, you've got Gary and Monkey fighting for P9 and 10. Yeah, they're right on the back of Mongo, so it looks like this really is going to be the uh, crossover point between the Inters and the media, or the Wets. Gary all over the back of Monkey. Monkey just can't seem to get the traction down that Gary can. We should be able to see as we see Mongo run slightly out wide. That's going to allow Monkey round the outside. Obviously, no DRS assistance, but that doesn't matter. Guy's going to try to look around the outside as well. Breaks that slight bit later, just with the better tyres on the enters. Makes that move oh. no problem. Bit of front wing then popped up. I wonder who's lost a wing flap there. I think it was the RB, if I'm correct, of Cruz. Yes, he has. He's lost a right wing end plate. Um, so that's going to affect him um, significantly into the last corners and in sector one alone but we have a very close battle on on track cross screen with two laps left of Rumaster eagle and biddle have all closed up within a second of each other yeah crucially though Rumaster does have the penalty on his back so it's really looking between eagle and biddle, yeah, sorry eagle and biddle um all they have to well all biddle has to do is just overtake eagle and he will get the net p4 but we all know Biddle, he'll want to do this on track as we have Hirsch. Looks like the Wall of Champions, he's went out. Yep, sadly it's a little bit too late for the safety car, so that will stay as a caution while the Yorkie picks up a three a second penalty. So that's not going to help his situation. So at the moment, Cruz has managed to get past his teammate into that last points pain position. Um, so at the minute you've got... Lexus in P7, you've got Biddle at Eagle and Rumaster P6, 5 and 4. Squids in P3, P2 is Grand Z, P1 is Oblaf. Um, I wonder if one of these guys on the last lap is going to take a lunge, um, a sensible lunge, to try and put the other driver off, just to get them a little extra points. Uh, can matter later on in the championship. Yeah, every point does matter, especially now we live. Crucially, the two RB guys, one has, well, I was going to say one has a lot of battery, but Gary's decided to burn all his battery, so he's giving the advantage straight back to Cruiser. That's going to be one to look out for as we go, coming towards the last lap, just through the chicanes, both of them get through fine, this guy picks up a three seconds, so that should be Cruiser set up for P8, but definitely now Biddle needs to try to get past Eagle as soon as he can, because we've got, what, two sectors of the track left to do it. Yep. So Eagle looks like he's in the better position to try and overtake Remaster here, but he's going to have to. He's, he's probably got a couple more corners left. He's probably best places into the chicane before the back straight. Gary's now picked up his three-second penalty with Yorkie just right behind, and Cruz picks also picks up a three-second penalty. So the two drivers behind would be kicking themselves right now just for that little extra point. And is Eagle close enough for a little lunge down into the turn 12? 
No, he's not. So he's going to see if we can get a good exit here. Going down into the main back straight. Sorry. Into turn 13, 14. He has got a very, very good run here. Um, but I've got to go to the start line. And P1 goes to Oblaf. And P2 goes to Groundsy. Squid's coming across the line. Very happy with himself into P3. Roommaster is looks like he's going to be able to stick it out in P4. Very good racing by these guys. So Roommaster comes along the line. P, I oh know P6, P7 in the end. So Eagle P4, Bidwell P5, Lexus P6, P7, Roommaster. P8 is Cruz. P9 is Silverside Boy. And P10 is Yorkie. And we still got. Oh no, Monkey just got in front of Douche in the end. He finishes P12. P13 is Douche. P14 is Liam, more leader, P15, Noah is P16, and we're just waiting for TJ to cross the line, and he just finishes in last place. So, that was very exciting. Not much action up at the front. It looks like there's a couple of drivers that are more comfortable than others, especially the top three drivers compared to the rest. And then you have a group of three drivers that look like they're on the same pace, and then we had P eight down to p13 probably around the same pace and fighting each other the whole lap so th there we go so for the sprint race oblaf takes the uh top amount of points with eight points and then grounds is seven squid with six eagle with five biddle with four lexus with three remaster with two and Cruz with that single championship point yeah that's a good way Did to you enjoy on. that one yeah, it was a good race, especially with the changeable conditions. We never knew. Obviously, it just didn't dry up enough for Lexus and Gary, who started on the intermediates. But it was still a good call from both of them. Both do get the points from where they started. You have to say it was a good, respectable drive from them too. But yeah, the top three just seemed to be driving away, really enjoying them conditions. So that if anything, they'd be praying for near enough the same for the main sprint race. And it's back to the sunny Canada. But it does look a little bit cloudy. So Q1, we have uh, 18 minutes of qualifying. So it will be only one session. So I would expect a lot of people to go out on um, soft tyres as they saved quite a few sets for the sprint. But then obviously it was raining. So they've saved themselves a few for the qualifying and for the race. First person out on track it looks like it's, it's a Mercedes, so it's going to either be midfield maestro, who's just joined us, so he did miss the sprint race, um, and Yorkie, and it is Yorkie just coming out alongside the Alpine of Biddle and who's the other Alpine there? Diamond there Alpine there. Oh, it is a, a Diamond Douche. Yeah, we always but see I'm Diamond Douche. Sorry. <coughs> no, no, continue. Yeah, we we'll see Diamond Deuce trying to be the first one out on track. Sadly, this week he hasn't been able to do it with Yorkie just getting out in front. So, as we move on, back to the dry qualifying. But as Az did say, there's a few clouds hanging about the track. Maybe you are in for a bit of the changeable conditions, which could have been interesting as we get towards the end of this qualifying session. We just have a few guys out on the right laps, but most likely we will be following. I think Yorkie will be the first one to set his lap once he take, does come round. Where is he? If you take the viewers round, I oh know we've got someone just past, we've got Douche just past him. If you go along with Douche, I'm just going to quickly run to the toilet. Not a problem. Oh, so, Douche just lined up for his lap. He crucially doesn't get corner cutted which would have invalidated his next lap as we go across the line down in towards turn one and two just trying to break gets the car turned in nicely just clips the curve helps it with better rotation keeps the car tight in just trying to cut off as much track as he can as we go in towards this tough chicane of three and four so easy to cut the inside here but he's took that perfectly that inside curb of four will help the car get rotated keep the foot down let's come up towards the second chicane of seven and eight or sorry, six and seven. Looks like he's been able to get through there as we have the second DRS zone of the track. Come up towards really the last chicane of sector two. It's nicely turned in. No invalidations just yet. As we look and see what his sector two time is. 
looks to be relatively competitive a 41 8 as we get down towards the hairpin slightly late on the brakes but he has been able to get the car rotated as we go down towards this long back straight gets the drs open and should be using all of his batteries to get towards the end of this lap plenty of time now to think about how he's going to attack this will he go full send on the chicane or will he just take it nice and easy to get the time on the board which it looks like he's just a bit conservative on it just to make sure he gets the time on the board and it's going to be a, not a bad time of a 10.1 plenty of time to be found in there compared to what our sprint qualifying was but we've got what, 14 and a half minutes of it as we see Biddle with a 9.6 already pumping the pace up of the track so we should be seeing near enough some guys get into the high hits maybe towards the end of this qualifying session Yep, so it's a reasonably good time there by Biddle. Slightly up on his first qualified run in for the sprint quali. Uh, so reasonably good there. Obviously, a lot of these drivers are going to learn their lessons from the first qualifying session where where they can push. And again, like that, I was just about to say, TJ and Gary are going to want to try and get themselves up there. And TJ's already gone into the 110.8, so it's a reasonably good time for him. Um, monkey boy just behind with a 111.2 um, so yeah what drives do you reckon they need to improve um, from uh, the sprint qualifying apart from obviously the obvious of Gary and TJ who were in positions they wouldn't normally be in I think one person that really shocked me was actually our first our, our race winner last week was Lexus he was all the way down there I think it was P14 I was, I was think maybe he'd look to improve a lot. I know he's on the mediums at the minute, so he's probably just looking that little bit more track time. Just get on the sauce at the very end as he's invalidated this lap. He's just letting some cars through and he should be able to push on this next lap, confirm that he does have the fuel for it. As he's going to probably try to get a tow for most of this lap. But there's a lot of traffic though between the, down the back straight. Yeah, we've seen a lot of drivers on their first run invalidating their first lap time. This is a good round here, to be honest. You want to try and nail that first lap, seeing as the track degradation here is quite high. The tyre wear is very high here. Um, and obviously, you want that momentum and that less pressure going into that second fly lap, especially with the difficult corners of turn 13 and 14 that you need to get perfectly right. Um, and probably turn 1 all the way to 3, where you can lose quite a lot of time. You see Monkey Boy on a second flying laps, just done as exactly as you said, just invalidated. Luckily for him, he's got a lap time on the board at Delta to play with. These guys all need to get their first laps on the board straight away. It doesn't matter how slow it is, just need to get that Delta on. Try to get three laps in this session. It is quite a short lap time, so there should be no problem with getting back around, getting a new set of rubber on and going again. Yeah, we've still got a lot of people out on medium tyres. It's either they're saving it or they used quite a lot in the first of the qualifying session, which was for the sprint. Some ball with Fardo now in the Williams coming across the Sector 2 line, which is a 42.4, um, which isn't the fastest. I think Deuce did a 41.8. It's getting a nice slipstream here from the Haas in front. Um, he's going to take full advantage of that. He's going to... Yep, uh, the kick salmon has got out of the way. He's taking it quite quite conservatively through the turn 13 and 14. Let's see what time he does. Here's a 1.10.9 on the mediums. I'm pretty sure that is... Yep, so that is the fastest out of the medium tyre runners so far. So for him, that is a good um, first lap for him. What do you think the crossover point of the tyres are, as in the delta times, the difference? I think it's in around about six, seven tenths. It's just with so many high-speed chicanes that we have around here. You're near enough saying three high-speed chicanes. The soft tires are just going to be so much grip. Provide you to get on the par so much earlier that you're just going to gain so much time from it. Crucially, out of six and seven, it just allows you to get the traction down slightly. So, as we say, that Noah gets up to 10.2 on the medium. So, at that rate, he'd be really pushing Biddle once he gets onto the soft tires towards the end of this qualifying session. Yeah, just going through um, sector two now with Cruz. It got a little bit compromised there by the McLaren um, coming into the end of sector one, but he has done a 41.5 on their medium tyres. So 
the track is ramping up. There's going to be more grips than this at the minute. It's going to put him into the one at nine. So let's see how he takes turn 13, 14. DRS is wide open. He's having to take the inside line because the Williams stuck himself up on the uh, left-hand side. See if he's quite aggressive through turn 13, 14. Yes, he is taking a lot of curb on both. Not as much of a runoff on the right-hand side of the water champs, trying to keep away from it. And it is a 198. Brilliant lap there by Cruz. Yeah, it's especially on the medium tyres. Yeah, fantastic. And especially with how aggressive he was through 13 and 14. That's where he gains all of his lap time. He was already, I think it was two tenths up on Diamond as we crossed the sector two time in line. So he's gaining up so much time, especially on the mediums. But it, crucially, I think they're four laps old. So I don't know if he's taken these ones from the sprint qualifying or if these it's just been he's done four laps on them this session alone. Just looking at now at our P3 um, finisher in the sprint. He's done a 41.5. So he's matched Cruz, but he is on the soft tyres. So it's not a reasonably good middle sector by him. Um, and it's quite important here that, you know, not to use too much tyre in, um, in sector one because you will lose out in sector two. Do you think more people are going to try and get that extra push in Sector 1 more than Sector 2 around here? Yeah, I think the way the track goes, you know, it's you need to use a lot more of the tyre through Sector 1 than you will of Sector 2. You know, you need to probably just take the best, make the best of it to what you can. <laughs> Sorry. Let you grip that you have oh. before the tyres do start overheating. Yeah, and we have Yorkie off into the wall and he entered the chicane. I'm not too sure how he ended up there. Obviously, Al broke himself, got on the marbles and tried turning, but he was facing into the wall. He had to reverse and turn round. Um, so not a very good qualifying session by him so far. That was his first set of runs. He did invalidate his first run. That was his second run. Um, so, yep, yeah, pressure on Yorkie's shoulders to try and get the next couple of laps in uh, and be right. We've got Oblav just coming over the line out. One at five. Oh, one five. Gone up to fifth at 110.1. That was his second run. Um, he had some battery still left on board, about 14%. So a little bit more um, battery uses that he can do throughout the lap. Um, he was our winner in the sprint race. Um, yep, reasonably good time, but he's still about four tenths off of uh, Biddle. A little slide there coming out of uh, turn five and six, I believe. Yep, they're the first sets of laps that just gone in. Uh, if you take us around the track, oh no, I think Gary is, yeah, no, he's backed out. So he's P9, 10-5, he hasn't got enough battery to finish the lap. So I think he's going to have another second warm-up lap. So yep, uh, first set of laps have been done. You've got Monkey, he's slower um, on his second run now. He's about a tenth and a half off his fastest time. Uh, so I wonder if he's going to see him pull it into the pits. Um, the other flag's waving in sector two, sector three. It's going to be uh, cars that moving out of the way. Uh, Rumas just come over the line now. Um, he looks like he's just about to start a uh, flying lap. So do you want to take the viewers around with Rumas and the Aston Martin? Yeah, as I say, that he's just absolutely lost the rear end off turn two. So this isn't going to be a, a relatively good lap time. But as long as he can get something on the board, at least bring him up one position where he is, maybe even two. Especially with grounds he's setting at 124. But it does look like he's just going to back out of it. He lost so much of the rear end and he's just invalidated. So just be a matter of getting the battery back up, which he already has done, and just pull the tires down slightly and try to go for it again. Yep. Uh, just on board with Liam now. L go round with the views with Liam. He has just started his lap coming into sector two. Yeah, it's just got through six and seven. She came coming up to the second DRS zone. Coming up towards now eight and nine. It's crucial to take as much inside curb as you can here. It straightens out the car, which he does. Gets a second bit of that inside curb of nine. It's the shortest line towards this hairpin now. Let's see if he can get the breaking point right or will he go a bit deep? Looks like he's just went slightly deep, but he has been able to get the car turned in time. He'll get the long run now down towards 13 and 14. Plenty of battery to use as he sticks it on overtake. Usually, though, he has taken it off, but he has stuck it back on. So plenty more top speed to come from him. Looks like he'll be able to get a great exit. As long as he can get this right, he'll have plenty of speed getting towards this line. It's right close to the wall, but overtake on. 
DRS is open. It's going to be a great lap. It's a 9-5. Great lap from Liam at the moment. Yep, yeah, and while he's on board with Liam, uh, Biddle did go faster with a 1-9-3. So he's settling quite nicely. Um, so let's he's on provisional pole at the minute. Still got another go at this lap. He pits for fresh tyres. Got Cruz back down. Cruz, oh, he had a massive wobble coming out of turn 14. It was a tenth and a half up. Let's see where he puts him. And it doesn't improve. He improves slightly, but he would have lost a lot of time. Um, he had a massive wobble just coming out of the Wall of Champions. Um, but he did very well keeping it on the track. Got midfield maestro. He's about half a tenth up at the moment. He's taking the inside line, which is shorter line to the next corner. See quite a lot of people cutting that corner there, so it's a good viewing point for the rest of the tiers that have got left to race. That um, you can cut that corner without invalidating. But he's slightly down his time. Um, this chicane cross kid is. Uh, I, I've seen quite a lot of drivers, and personally, I, I I tend to go deep to get a faster run up the back straight. Um, what do you think the best exit is an entry point to? the chicane is it worth going um tight and going towards the wall going slightly deep which gives you the better straight line coming onto the back straight yeah it's obviously down to personal preference but for me i do prefer to take that later apex just go that little bit deeper on the brakes yes you'll lose your time in the actual corner but you gain so much of it down the back straight that you need to do it if you try to go tight you just your minimum speed is just so low and it's so much later to get up back onto the power. You see Lexus, he takes that slightly deeper line. You just see the exit that he's able to get straight onto the power. Flat out. It's, definitely, it's the only way to go, especially in qualifying. But in the race, it does change up slightly. The car in front of you, you near enough do have to take that tighter line. Just to try to keep right on the back of the car. Get as much slipstream as you can. Yep, so I'm just on board with Silverside Boy. He was four temps up in the first sector. He's now five and a half temps up. He's gone a little bit deep, so he's using the deeper line. Uh, trying to give him that extra straight line speed coming onto the straight and, and having a good exit. DRS is wide open. Let's see how he takes the last two corners of turn 13 and 14. Is he going to take it quite aggressively? Yes, he does. Plenty of curb on the left-hand side. Doesn't take much on the right-hand side, but gives him straight a line coming in over across the line. So it's a 1-10-1. That moves him up a couple of positions. He did lose about two temps nearly um, over them course of um, corners. So there's plenty of improvement there. Even if he took them two temps off, that would take him up to six, sixth at a minute. So it is pretty... Uh, um, what's the word? Uh, it's pretty close out there lap time was yeah you're basically looking from p5 down by p6 down you know it's only separated by four or five tenths you say guys lost like two tenths and that could have brought him up to p6 and uh yeah p6 at the time so he knows it's just going to be his last lap at it this is where you near enough have to go full send on that chicane if you invalidate you invalidate but if you don't invalidate and you get that right there's just going to be two three tenths easily to find through there no problem yeah and Eagles decided to retire he's obviously either saving tyres or he, he just personally knows he can't do any more Yorkie and the Mercedes is about a tenth and a half down after sector one let's have a look what he's like in sector two plenty of battery still on board still not using the overtake button so he, he's gained a little bit more time Mon goes out there Fardo is just starting uh, his lap now. Hirsch invalidated his first round. Monkey Boy is going to be looking to get this lap in because it's his only chance. So he's taking to 13 and 14. Close to the Water Champions. He's going to come across the line. Now it's a reasonably good time. That puts him out to P8. So well done to Monkey. That's at the minute. Provisionally P8 with a one near enough for 110 flat. TJ's had a, a shocker. Um, he's invalidated again, um, so he's got enough time for one more lap. He's down in P16. A lot of yellow flags out there. It's hard to keep up. Groundsy is 10 seconds up at the moment. So this is saying he's around 114. Liam and Squid are separated. We have a look at the top. The both Red Bulls have got exactly the same time. Not often you see that. I know last week though we did see three cars the exact same time. 
It's two weeks in a row, it just shows how tight this field is. As we see, Liam, this is, looks like it's going to be his only lap for it. He needs to get two tenths just to try to equal Biddle. Biddle's on his last lap. So we see with Liam what his second sector timing is. If he is up by two tenths, he's down just under a tenth. So he needs to have a mega last sector here to try to challenge Biddle. He's got 60% battery, so he has got a lot of battery to use. Um, so you may see him at the top if he gets his turn 13 and 14 correct Let's have a look he's got 10 percent left so he used a lot of overtake there he's gonna have a nice little squirt going to the finish line this is gonna be close for pole oh not enough so 1095 so he actually lost out of time squid's done Let's have a look at anyone else We've got more leader he's actually up two temps at a minute so let's have a look for him cross screen with the williams yeah and crucially Biddle's actually came in he was just under a temp up on his lap through the second sector so it looks like more leader could disrupt this party it's all coming down to the last chicane he's just just behind Biddle by probably two three hundredths of a second so if he can get a better exit through this chicane you know this could be all for the Williams team to take off these Alpine boys so he get through very aggressive through it but he's lost the rear end he's tried to send ah. it through and the rear end just did not want to give yeah, he was on for pole then. And he seems a bit angry with himself. It looks like everyone's done. Monkey's done. He's about seven tenths off his fastest lap. Invalidated anyway. But yep, that, guys, is our provisional grid for Canadian Grand Prix. I've just seen a horse car go up in the air. Uh, Monkey Boy has crashed out. Oh, the McLaren's crashed out. <laughs> Let's have a look. Any more people? Oh, we're all just missing him. Anyone else want to hit him? Looks like we're all I'm good for nine, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah another yeah. disappointing uh, qualifying uh, from TJ. Um, uh, and Yorkie down there just couldn't get their lap, lap times in, unfortunately. Um, I've got an Aston Martin coming around. Let's see if he gives Monkey a good old whack coming <laughs> over the five. Pitch straight. Is he going to hit him? No. Oh. Yep, yeah, guys, that is it. Uh, Gary says he invalidated the last corner on exit, but didn't hit wall. Lost three temps, so he's um, not very happy with himself. But even with three temps, that would have just put him up just a couple of places, up to around P10, 9 or 10. We can just quickly take a screenshot of uh, that cross grid just in case we need a restart. But, yep. Yeah. Yeah. There's our grid for the Canadian Grand Prix. Well done to Biddle, taking his first pole position of the season. Um, nice comeback from him. Struggled in the first race, but he's made his way up into pole position um, by two thousandths of a second from Oblaf. Um, so he's going to put Biddle under pressure um, as he did drive a very, very good race in the sprint. So any... Sh any... Um, Oh, hang on. It's Liam's. Liam's. Liam. I can't get at him because he's in the A. So he is. So it's. Didn't allow me to if invite it, him off the race director. Uh, yeah, that's the only way you're going to be able to do it. Um, I'll try. Don't know. There's another. Way. I don't know if there's another way of inviting him in. To be honest. Um. <sighs> he should be able to join off someone if he's got. So one of his friends are that racing. should be should a be invite sent to him hopefully That'd yeah be... anyone disappoint you there in qualifying it, no, at this rate I can't even say I'm disappointed with TJ anymore it's it's what I've been used to he's just, we all know now he's just not a great qualifier he's a lot more better in the race but it just seems this year at all he doesn't have the pace whatsoever um, barring him maybe Again, Lexus, again, he's down there in P15. I thought he would have been a lot higher than where he is. And even Fardo, you know, we know he's a quick enough driver. But he would have been a lot further up than where he is also. And you have the guys at yeah. ground seat, P2 in the sprint race. He's down in P11 at the minute. I think Canada is kind of like Marmite. You love it or hate it. And if you hate it, you're never going to be in the groove around here because you've got... Uh... 
it, it, I know it's a totally different circuit, but it's kind of like Monaco, Monaco, where you've got to be so precise on the corners that are needed to gain time. Um, it is classed as a street track, but it is a very, very difficult track to drive if you're not in the groove. So we're just waiting for the host to ready up, so we will have a three or three minute time. Um, Liam says the Steam servers are down cross Greece, so. Um, yeah, I will try spamming him some invites here and see if I can get him back in once I can actually. Looks like I could be a bit stuck here on the actual race director. <laughs> so, we'll see how this uh, ends up once it gets kicked off. Yeah. So, David said if you're stuck on a diet, you'll need the dashboard. <laughs> Great. Annoying. So, Liam, once I get back in the session, I will start spamming the invites and hopefully I can get you back in. Um, but yep, it's nice and sunny in Canada. A couple of clouds above. I wonder if it's changeable positions. Um, but mixed up grid, I would say. Got a few different faces up the top, and we have Liam. He has joined. Um, so that's good for him, as he did have a brilliant qualifying um, up into that top four position. Um, and TJ has decided to start. So, just waiting for Crossfield to come back, but I'll go through the driver grid for you. So, P20 is the Ferrari of Hirsch, P19 is Fardo, P18 is TJ, Yorkie is P17, we've got Mongo in P16, P15 is Lexus, P14 is Douche, P13 is Silverside Boy, Monkey Boy is P12. P11 is Granzi, P10 is Midfield Maestro, P9 is Noah, P8 is Cruz, P7 is Moor Leader, P6 is Eagle, P5 is Rumaster, P4 is Squid, P3 is Liam, P2 is Oblaf Racing, and P1 is the main man, Biddle. Hopefully, when Liam joins in, it doesn't disqualify him because he can't get into his car. Uh, fingers crossed, um, but let's also have a look at the tyre situation. So everyone, apart from Noah, Gary, Silverside Boy, Mongo and Lexus have all gone hard. So they're looking into the long run. If there's an early safety car, this is going to play out in their hands. Um, but as it's such a short pit stop, it's around 14 to 16 seconds. I might be wrong. Um, a lot could be won or lost in the pits and on strategy here. Uh, let's try and get everything up that we need. Okay, are you back in cross screen yet? You'll be just loading back into the session now, hopefully. Radio. Okay, just everyone's coming up to the grid slots no one so far has disqualified themselves Biddle's pointing himself to the right hand side so he's trying to defend off Oblav who's also pointing towards Biddle can you see the are you back in now cross -Gree? not just yet it's just loading up at the minute should be back in okay. second out here so we got two lights all five lights straight away we go and Biddle is away nice and cleanly, but Oblaf has, oh, Liam's had a brilliant start up into P1 already in that red ball. He's getting squeezed by Oblaf at the minute, pushed slightly wide, he's on the wider line of the marbles. Is that going to compromise his exit? But no, bad start by Biddle in the end. The Biddle has now dropped from P3 to P, uh, P1 to P3, so very good start there by Liam. Um, just got in at the right time. Everyone looks cleanly through, it looks like. So, yeah. Silverside boys dropped a, a couple of positions already, but he is on the harder tyre. And we have a Alfa Romeo, Alfa Romeo kick salva, what you want to call him, in the wall. Um, has lost half of his front 
wing, so it'll be a very, you want to be a gentleman, you can get out of people's way behind, because you have got half a wing, and we've got a horse in the background, he's lost part of his wing also, and I think that was TJ, unfortunately, getting, oh, we've got TJ and Fardo, both out, Fardo, TJ's out, crash at the back. Fardo and TJ get caught together, coming out the chicane, and they are both in class. It's a cubic wall. Um, so, yep, that's the end of TJ's Canadian Grand Prix. Ah, very good for him. There's the virtual safety car. We've got Groundsy, Hirsch, and Fardo all in. Um, yep, clean, clean start across three so far. Apart yeah. from that. Yeah, it looked like a pretty clean start. Great getaway from Liam already, just to get past Biddle. And obviously, Oblaf has got past Biddle as well. So he doesn't look like they've got the tyres warmed up as quick as these two guys on the formation lap. If they are resting able to get back on the green flag racing, can Biddle try to catch them out? Looks like he's had a better exit out of six and seven. Might have a little look here at Liam. But Liam does have the DRS, so he's had a little look at Oblaf, but he thinks it's a lot better of it still in the early, early stages of this race. That's cost him as now Biddle's going to go down the inside towards the hairpin. Needs to make sure he doesn't now break himself and head into the all lap. But it looks like he's timed this absolutely perfectly now. It all depends who gets the slipstream because both win will have the DRS. Looks like Biddle is going to be better off here. And we have all lap now. Is he going to try to defend this or is he just going to let it happen? Looks like he's going to let it happen. So Biddle does retake the lead of this race after two laps. Probably a great sign for him already to be back up there where he should be. Yeah, um, Biddle back up to first, but he did use quite a lot of battery there um, to get past. So he has enough taken more than half his battery, whereas the guys behind didn't use any to defend. Um, so Biddle's just got to try and gain that um, the battery life back of the next couple laps so he has got a chance to defend under DRS conditions. Granzi with a uh, 114 at the back um, on the hard and Fardo is in the Williams. He's decided to go with the soft tyres this run. Let's have a look at the position changes. But not many people gain positions or main massive positions. You've got Diamond up three. Gary's up one, Lex is up two, York is up two. So, and of course, up at the top, pretty style, mate. Uh, and more leader and crews kept the same positions. Yeah, it's a lot quieter for the start than what we had in the sprint race. Everybody's kind of in around where they should be. Obviously, we have Brownsy. He's the one that had the wing damage at the start of this race. So he's had the box. He's well behind oh. on the pace. Good, great camera angle of that wall of champions. How close these cars actually oh. get to them. Yeah, that was um, pretty close there by the Aston Martin and Liam. It looks like he's got a better exit coming up, but all this fighting has brought Squid back into play behind him. So no one's actually running away with it just yet. Biddle's got a slight little gap um, at the moment, um, but he has used more battery than people from behind. But the DRS is going um, it's going to help Oblaf and Liam to save that, that battery. Um, I think the DRS is probably, what would you say, worth about four tenths, five tenths around here in total over the lap? Or even yeah. more? I would say about four or five tenths, yeah, in total. Obviously, a lot of that's going to come from down the back straight. The other two DRS zones, maybe the one over the start finish line, is a bit oh. of contact between Liam and Oblaf. Thankfully, Oblaf has been able to keep the car straight, but that's a loud biddle. Who get that one second, well, 1.3 second gap, but crucially, it happened just after the detection zone. So can Oblaf, you will get the double dose of the DRS to get back in towards this one second. He'd be hoping to try to get back in towards the one second gap once we get towards the end of turn one, two. Yeah, and all this fighting, um, Squid managed to get past Liam, and Liam's just under pressure now from Eagle. So, um, But Oblaf did have to use quite a lot of battery then to try and keep um, up with Biddle after that little mistake. Um, his rears are already sliding coming out of turn one um, and turn two. Let's talk about turn two coming up the hill. It is a very difficult corner, very low traction. Um, is it a personal corner that you struggle with? Because um, it seems like quite a lot of drivers um, are lo losing the rear end there. Yeah, it's one I really do find hard around here. It just seems like I can't be able to get the power down right whatsoever. It's always either too little. That I lose too much time or too much and the car just wants to spin out on me and 
you're near enough losing your whole lap there. But there and I would say turn seven is probably my two most hated uh, corners on this track just for traction alone. Yeah, Biddle's lost uh, a little bit of time now. He's lost four attempts over the course of this lap. Oblaf is now back into uh, DRS and slipstream of Biddle. Oblaf has got his flashing red light at the back, so he is saving battery here. Um, he's not using it at all. Uh, Squid of the Red Bull and Liam pretty much matched throughout of the uh, qualified and the sprint races. Um, but the best thing for the Red Bull drivers to do is try and work together, not fight each other um, so much in these opening stages because they are both on the... And Oblaf's had a mistake somewhere and Squid's going to go for the move into turn... And Oblaf squeezes him! Oh! And he spins him round. Oh dear, oh dear. It's not yeah, what Oblaf, you see. No, Oblaf just didn't give Squid enough room. Um, Unfortunately, he spun him round, but he's still in the top 10. We know he's quite fast, so hopefully we'll see him back towards the front and very soon. Um, but, yep, yeah, if that gets sent in, I'm pretty sure it's probably going to be a penalty to Oblaf, so he needs to try and gain as much time on the guys behind. Liam's now under pressure from Eagle. Eagle's still got a little bit more battery than Liam. Um, see if Eagle's going to go for the move or he's going to stick. He's going to stick it out, but, yep. Yeah, Top seven is separated by two and a half seconds. Yeah, it looks like we are going to get a bit of a DRS gin here, just with the three DRS, and it's very hard for guys to make out sometimes around the rest of the lap being such a short lap time. But one crucial thing here I found out in the tier three race is the undercut is so powerful. So, you know, maybe these guys could be thinking of boxing maybe a lap or two early. They'll be able to get in there two, three seconds on the guys that are going to stay out and try to push on with these mediums so that'll be one to look out for maybe in about five six laps time yeah squid again like we were saying back down in temp he's now under a lot of pressure from lexus i wonder if he's um overheated his tires with that little spin uh, it's going to take him a couple of laps to get you through it got sector one we have a spin at the back i believe it's fardo's back round. we it's gone for another little half spin um, so, yep, yeah, he's not having a very good race so far. Collecting TJ at the start. Oh, well, the first lap, and, uh, yep, yeah, six seconds behind in last. But Biddle's relinquished the top spot so far. Uh, Oblaf gets past him uh, with the DRS open. Oh, no, Oblaf loses the rear end going into the Wall of Champions. Uh, lucky enough, he has that DRS to cover himself off from Biddle, but Biddle's just going to hit. The best thing for Biddle to do is just... Try and be behind him, save a little battery because Biddle does have only 27% and Oblaf does have 86 So, yep, yeah, Biddle's engineer here, you can hear what we're saying. Try and get him to save some battery. Uh, got Liam now right behind Biddle. Um, Going to start putting the Alpine under a lot of pressure. Yeah, and it's, you can see Oblaf already. He's all losing so much uh, rear grip. I don't know if his tires are already going or he's just struggling. But he broke so early, Liam nearly got caught out from it. Don't know if he has damage, doesn't look like it. But already we're seeing the time penalties come flying in. Liam's one of our first front runners that have succumbed to that. So towards the end of this race, if we do get a late safety car, that's just going to help whoever doesn't have the time penalties to gain up the positions. Yep. Um, yeah, these early people that have got the three seconds obviously going to have to be careful for the rest of the race because they are just going to... It's just going to add and add and add and add. Um, so at one point you're going to have to try and calm yourself down. Otherwise you are going to have a lot towards the end. Um, but they are all racking up now. We do have a Williams there that's ghosted. Don't know who that is. Is that more leader? Is yeah. Hit the wall? Just left there. So hopefully he should be back in a second. Okay. But he has ghosted, which is a good thing. Um you're not going to have any actions because of the AI. That puts Cruz up into P7. So far, the hard runners are... Let's have a look. So we've got Noah, Lexus and Gary all stationary in 9th, 10th, or 8th, 9th and 13th. So they're not making it any inroads just yet. Um, so that hopefully will change later on in the race but we have got Roommaster and Midfield Master fighting with Eagle up the top 
And we have sector two. We also, again, we have a Williams round at the back. Is that Fardo again? No, it's not. So who was that then? Mm. That more leader? Oh, who was that then? I don't actually know because no, more leader's still on AI. He hasn't rejoined the session just yet. The blue car. Oh, Squid. Squid's going around again. P16 now. So he he's had a sure. spin coming out of um, the chicane. Um, so yeah, bad to worse for him. Virtual safety car. So. Uh, oh, Monkey Boy's got a 10 second penalty. It, not going to be, that ain't good for him. Um, what's the virtual safety car for? Must have been someone's hit the wall and just caused, uh, like, sorry, caused a bit of damage. But maybe could have been on the racing line. Didn't see anything on the map or anything like that. But yeah, after. Trying to figure out why the safety car, virtual safety car, come out. Biddle has lost two positions here. Cross has gone down to P4. Oh, drive through penalty. Who is that? We've got Lexus, and hopefully that wasn't one of the front runners. Lexus and Yorkie have both got drive through penalties, so they got the restart completely wrong. So that would have damaged their whole race now. Um, so the safety cars uh, is going to be their best shout for good points for this race. But yeah, Biddle's lost two positions. Yeah, I, unless he might have been the one that caused it, but he doesn't have any damage whatsoever. So I don't know how he's lost out so many positions so quickly, unless he might have been just caught by the actual restart, by the Delta. Maybe he was just having to slow down so much from it, and the guys behind were able to pull away. We already see Oblaf, what, just over one second away from Liam. Well, he's obviously got a good resource from that VSC. Yeah, and you've got Noah and Midfield Marshall on the back of um, Biddle now. So it's um, it's come to the point where these medium tyres are going to be um, pretty much shot. And Biddle has a slide going through turn f um, six and seven. It's going to compromise his exit, but also Midfield Marshall had a little slide too. But the man on the move at the minute looks like it's Noah. Um, he's had a brilliant first part of this session. He's got a good run on midfield Marshall there. I wonder if he's going to go down the inside before the main straight. Is he going to go for it? No, it's not enough or close enough. Goes a little bit deeper and look what we were speaking about earlier. He's got a much better drive off that corner. But Biddle has a terrible ex exit there and I think he's going to get past here by midfield. Yeah. Looks like these tyres are absolutely shot the mediums. I wouldn't be surprised to see Biddle going in, which he does. I'm surprised, obviously, not to see Oblak going in. He's been struggling on his rear tyres for the last four or five laps. I thought, if anything, he'd be one of the first ones to go in, but he's looking to stay out. Maybe that's going to cost him here with Biddle going in early. He'd be able to get a good yep. undercut on him. Yeah, and at some point, he, he, he must have had a massive slide because he lost 1.2 seconds over the course of half a lap to Liam, and, and Liam ended up passing him. So this is going to get... This is going to be... A, a guessing game where Biddle's going to come out of compared to um, Liam. So it was about two and a half seconds behind uh, the leaders. So let's see if the the undercut is worth it. Uh, like you were saying earlier, it's quite strong. So let's see where he does come out when these two decide to pair. Got Silverside Boy and Lexus. Sorry, Silverside Boy, Mongo, Diamond all fighting at the minute with more leader. So this little group is about seven seconds behind midfield marshal, which is about half uh, half a pit stop. Um, but these runners, I think, apart from... Yeah, so it's Noah, Mongo and Gary all on hard. So they have got to go on the faster tyres. And you've got Diamond Douche now trying to go around the outside. And he's decided to pit. Uh, more, that's compromised more leader because more leader probably thought he was going to go around the outside and that leaves Mongo to take up into P5 and Gary goes for the dive oh. have just in the wall as well sorry he's lost his front left end flip yeah so the man that you said he was pretty disappointed compared to, um, to the last race he was in um, is again struggling P9 off the front wings, he's obviously lost out of the Wall of Champions. So, um, 
See, it'll be nice if he can get out of the way of other drives, which I think he's done, which he's, he's done very nicely. So good on him. Um, getting out of the way of a driver just picks up three seconds of warning, also trying to get out of the way. Um, Biddle, yeah, up into P9 already after that first pit stop. So at the minute, I think Biddle's going to come out comfortably in front of all these. Where's Liam? Liam's at a moment. He spun around. Yeah, so he has to be really struggling on the tyres. Uh, to be honest, I thought these guys in the mediums would have been in and all. It's all that still decides to go around. Will Liam think this is the time to box? Yes, get them tyres off him. But he's already lost out so much time, even if he didn't have that spin. And crucially, though, for Biddle, he has Eagle right in front of him. They're going to be just a DRS train. He's going to catch up so much time to Oblaf. And we can see a massive swing in the lead here once Oblaf does decide to get off these medium tyres. Yeah, Liam lost about five seconds there. We've got Sector 3, got Lexus as DNF. He has decided to DNF in the pit, so his day is done. Um, but Liam, he comes out a couple seconds behind Biddle, so he did lose some time. A couple seconds, four seconds in the end. Um, he did lose some time, but he is on fresher tyres. So let's see how he gets on in this second stage. So we have got the hard runner up into P1 now. So it is Noah gambling on them hard tyres at the beginning um, and he has now overtaken Oblaf. Oblaf is obviously wanting to go very long on his medium tyres but he is actually compromising himself by staying out too long. Yeah he's already lost a DRS of Noah. He has to box this lap there's no other way about it. Yes he's just taking his medicine now so this will be how far behind the Biddle does he come. Biddle's obviously had the help of the DRS for the past couple of laps that he's been on these hard tyres. I think he's already caught up about a second and a half on Oblast. So it could be quite tight on the exit. Obviously, it is quite a short pit lane here. We will see once we get to turn two. Obviously, the pit exit does skip by turn one. The bit of will get past, but once we get to turn two, we'll know a lot more once Oblast's been able to get off that pit limiter and see how much time has he actually lost. I don't think he's lost too much, to be honest. He's, he's still got out in front of Liam. So, um... Liam did gain two seconds, but Biddle is only two seconds up the road because of all this traffic that he's stuck in. We've got Eagle, Biddle and Cruz all fighting. So that hasn't worked out too well for Biddle just because of the track position that he came out in. With, uh, hasn't been able to clear the um, older tie guys in front. Yeah, it's more later. Just I think he was about three or four seconds up the road. And it looks like just Eagle and Biddle have been able to work so well together that they've got caught up a bit too much too quickly on them. But they've been able to dispatch. And crucially for Biddle and Eagle, they do have Cruiser in behind on the hard tyres that will try to defend off Oblaf. So, you know, they do have technically a rear gunner that they can trust. So for the first, uh, sorry, the front three really just swapped around. Cruiser's now straight into the battle. Yeah, Oblap has taken that position from more leader, so he is only a couple of... He's one place behind Biddle at the moment. Um, so he is sniffing it down at Biddle for that net P1 position. Um, but these hard tyre runners that started, uh, they're going to have to go really long. They're going Because they only lasted around lap 11 and 12, the, the medium tyres, they're going to have to make, make it to around lap 25. Do you think they're going to last? Yeah, they should actually last no problem. I'm pretty sure the hards do go pretty well around here. Um, I think it's actually a case of you near enough could do the whole race on them um, if you wanted to. But I am pretty sure to see them in around lap 23, 24. Obviously, with the lighter cars, it's not as much few, uh, energy going through the mediums. They'll be able to last that little bit longer than they have at the start of the race. So, you know, once we get towards when Noah, Mongo and Silverside do pit, should be in around 24, I would say. They'll have so much of a tyre advantage once we get to the last, what, five, six laps. And we can see them gaining so much time. We have oh, sector two, we've got a Ferrari around. I think that's going to be a hurt. Oh, we've got Fardo backwards into the wall. Is he going to get going? He's going to have to try and get going. Oh, that cause a safety car? And he spun around again. Ball leader's retired. Oh dear. What's That's he done? Just oh, in the pit lane. Oh. Bit of a weird one. He was in the points. Yeah. Oh. Okay. It's Obviously had enough. Yeah, it's a very weird one, especially with how close the walls are here. It's a very high chance of a full safety car coming out. So, 
You know, if I said I wouldn't have thought of doing that just yet. You get a safety car here in the next ten laps or so, you know, you'd be straight back into that race. Yeah. We've got Hirsch coming in now. Hopefully he's not gonna be another retiree and just continue, just in case it's a safety car, could always play in your hands. Uh, but it is Noah up in front on the hard tyres. Uh, started on these bad boys, but he has got a six and a half second gap at the moment. But to be honest, if he pits now, just say he pits now, he's going to come around around where, Gary, where Eagle and Biddle is. So he has done very well in this first in. Yeah, it just shows how what, well. So what is it? About 14 seconds for pistol? 14, 16 seconds? Something like no, that? No, it's about 18 to 19. Um, How's it? Oh. Yeah, sadly it's not that short. But even if that's the case, you know, he's coming in right behind the battle of the front four. Especially with being on the fresher mediums, you know, he's going to have such a tire advantage at that stage. If he makes good use of it, he'll be straight into that battle for the lead. Yeah, it was someone saying in chat that Eagle's leading this race. Come on. So we actually forgot that Eagle pitted a lap before Biddle. And uh, he is actually the net leader at the minute. See Gary just getting past Mongo. Mongo did seem to be holding him up slightly. So Gary try to get a bit of fresh air. Try to close in that gap on the top two at the minute before he does have to make his pit stop. He'll be obviously crying out for a safety car here in the next six, seven laps. They allow him to get onto the medium tyres with near enough a free pit stop and get into that battle for the lead. And maybe, God say it, get his first win in the FBRL. Yeah, and boy does he need it. <laughs> he's been here four seat. I think he's... Oh, oh he's out! Oh, oh the no! You <laughs> cursed Gary, him. I am so sorry. Gary, I don't know. Gary, I am so sorry, man. Oh, oh, oh no! The wall of champions is taken, not a champion, but a silver side boy instead. Oh dear! Obviously, a constructor's champion. It. Yeah, trying <laughs> to push a little bit too hard, but this is going to play into Noah, midfield maestro, and Mongo's hands. They're going to be able to basically get a free pit stop. I wonder if you're going to see Eagle, Biddle, and Oblaf all pit for fresh mediums, which they may have saved during the course of the weekend um but yeah gary said it wasn't you he couldn't avoid the wall so he was just taking a little bit too much speed a little bit too much speed into the wall of champions he was doing so well he's going to be kicking himself um and that long-awaited win will continue um but yeah this has played into the mclaren of noah's hands at the minute Especially they haven't been caught in behind the safety car, so they're not losing any time to the guys behind. And we should near enough see everybody bar midfield maestro get onto a fresh set of mediums. We should be able to make it to the end once we get back on the race and should be lap 21 22. You're looking 13 14 laps on the mediums to get them to the end, should be no problem whatsoever once we get there. Let's see if anyone else is pitting behind. Yep, we've got Liam's coming into the pits. Oh, I need probably. That uh, was close, but he's decided to get rid of the hards and probably go on the medium tyres, has he? Yep, brand new set of mediums. So, do you think it's wise for Biddle, Eagle and Oblaf to stay out when they could have gone on to the medium tyres? Or do you reckon it's best to stay out on the hards just because there's about 15 laps left still? It's a bold call, like we did see last week. Obviously, the safety car came out a lot later. We've seen half of the field go in for the new sauce and half the field stay out on the uh, worn mediums and the hard, I think it was for Eagle. And it paid off for them there in that time. So maybe they're thinking like last week and just think, right, there's no point of getting onto the fresh rubber. It's just happy enough to stick on the hard on the preferred race tyre near enough. So they know they can make it to the end. The mediums towards the end of this race will be dying off. So I think they're just happy that way. But we will see Noah probably gain a massive gap here. And then it'll be down to Eagle, Biddle and Oblaf really to try to catch him up towards the end of this race. Yep, so in a minute we've got a McLaren at one and two. Um, so like I was saying, it has. Oh, we've got Williams off in the background. <laughs> what is he doing? Um, why, is he, why is he overtaking me? I don't know he what he's doing. He's gonna get. He's passing people, so he's gonna get. He's gonna get disqualified in a minute. Fardo, yeah. not too sure what you're doing, buddy. Um, what? 
but you can't unlose the tape people under the safety car conditions unless it lets you you're gonna get in amongst all these leaders in a minute I'm not sure. yeah the stewards will definitely not be happy seeing yep. this here but he's gonna get i think it's near 40 seconds of penalties he's disqualified from the session so fardo's now been disqualified from the session for um passing everyone i'm not too sure why he was doing that but um Pretty sure you're allowed to pass under the safety car once it allows you to. Am I correct to unlap yourself? I don't think the game has that in it that you know lap cars can unlap themselves. But you know, if maybe you know if you were sitting in behind first and second, and there was an agreement between you to pull off the track to let the un guy unlap himself, yes, that would probably be okay. But not doing that there, you are just risking so much stuff happening, hitting into guys. Just causing stupid penalties that just shouldn't be happening. So, to me, that's just a no go for Fardo. Somehow, he actually hasn't been disqualified from it. Yeah, he has. He come up to disqualify from the session. So I wonder if it's going to pull him into the pits now. No. Oh. Well, that's a weird one. Because it did come up. If you look on the race directory, it says he's disqualified from the session. Hmm. Hopefully him do that as it glitched glitched it out. No, with them. So that's just going to cause safety cars there for another lap then. So if anything... I'll probably make it a lot happier for these guys on the new mediums, just not having to stress this tire more than they should have. Yeah, so so a few people gained a lot of positions for that safety guy. Got Cruz up into P5. Um, obviously, it's Noah Eagle. Um, Squid's now made his way up into P8. Let's have a look what tire situation he's on. So he's only on nine lap old hards. So. He's still in a good position um, to have a good result. We've got Liam, who's just pitted for a fresh set of mediums. But uh, let's talk about Diamond. He's uh, he struggled right here. Do uh, doesn't look too confident around the Canadian track. Yeah, it's a surprise for me. I would have thought this would have been probably one of his favourite tracks. You know, we did see him in pre-season. He seemed to be near enough the top of the list. For tier two and just doesn't seem to be showing that throughout the season. So maybe he'd be able to stand a chance here on the new medium to try to push not push through a few guys, but you know, get through a few guys, try to get some good points for this Alpine team, try to kick off his season. Uh you got Monkey down in P thirties on fresh tyres, so is Yorkie, but we have got the safety car in this lap. So let's see how Noah reacts to this restart. Uh, to be honest, it depends if the McLaren Joys want to play the team game here. If they want a good result here, you would think that they would want to work together. Use kind of use Eagle as a stopping block, really. Um, seeing as the tires will probably won't last to the end. What would you say would be best? I think ideally for these guys, Eagle. It, the problem with him holding up Biddle is he leaves himself vulnerable. Once Biddle gets past, then that's literally bit, or sorry, Biddle left through as we do get back under racing. Seems like there's no team orders. As, uh, Noah's actually caught out Eagle big time there. But if Noah can get away from Eagle here, then yes, it's going to help himself. But then for the team wise, Eagle's going to be under a lot of threat from Biddle and the guys behind. Yeah, so reasonably good restart there by everyone. No position change. You've got Fardo still going around. You know, he was disqualified. Still going around picking up penalties. So I'm not too sure what the game's doing now. Um, out of back, you've got Hirsch, Monkey Boy and Yorkie all fighting for position. Uh, let's see if Monkey Boy and Yorkie can get a much better start. Trying it into them points paying positions. Liam is under pressure from Diamond who picked up a three seconds at the start of the restart. Uh, but like you were saying, it's Noah. He has gained a 2.2 second gap in a half a lap. Um, and Eagle now is going to start coming under pressure from Biddle, Oblaf and 
Cruise. Cruise is on a very old hard tyres, on about 11 lap old tyres, so he may need to pit again. Um, not too sure what the tyre life is like for um, the hard here, but Eagle now picks up a three second penalty, so does Noah. Um, so Biddle is still in contention here for a very, very good result as long as he can keep it clean and not get any track limits. Um, and a minute uh, across here, it looks like Eagle's part of playing the team game here. He's uh, slowing everyone up behind. Yeah, it looks like that is the case at the minute. He's allowed Noah to get away by just over three seconds, especially now with Eagle picking up that penalty with Noah. Both of them three second penalties. The minute Noah's still going to stay P1, but Eagle will be falling right down the field with how close they are tucked in right behind him. But, you know, for the McLaren guys, at the minute it looks good, but, you know, towards the end of this race, Noah will start coming back to these hard runners. Maybe that's when the time penalties will start coming into effect, or if we do get another late safety car like we did last week. Yeah, you got the two Red Bull guys fighting in 8th and 9th. It's like Squid's allowed Liam to get past. And Liam's now got a good exit on Mongo. He's on the fresh at medium tyre, so expect him um, up there very soon. You've got Biddle, Oblaf and Eagle all fighting here. So it does look like Eagles has been passed. Oh, we've got a crash in the back. Squid's round. That's going to be another safety car. Oh dear, he's, uh, looks like he's come across at the Wall of Champions, spun around and ended up in the pit wall. So it does look like, and if I was Noah's case, what would you do? Would you pit for another fresh set of medium tyres? Because I believe Biddle, Oblaf, Eagle, Cruz, Midfield Marshall are all going to pit behind him. It's such a hard call for Noah to make. It's, yes... Technically, he'll probably make it on these medium tires, but if he does pit, though he might have the guys in behind him pit, but it's the guys that are on the mediums near from P7 on down. If they don't pit, he's got a lot of cars to overtake to get this race win back. So if anything, the probably the advantage near enough falls on Liam in P7 at the minute. He can see everybody else in front of him pit and know there's going to be a lot of guys behind him between so him and it. Noah. So let's have a look. Let's see if Noah does decide to pit to get fresh tyres. Is he going to take the gamble? He has got nearly a five-second gap. Is he going to pull into the pits? No, he doesn't. So let's see if Biddle decides to take the gamble and go in. No. That's quite surprising, would you not say? It's and we have to, and we've got, got Liam in. Liam's decided to pit. On goes in. Yeah, would you say that's a bit surprising for the guys behind? Yeah, I'm very surprised with Liam going into the pits. He's sitting on a new set of softs. Yes, we'll have about nine laps of racing probably once we get back under racing. But it's going to be quite a tough ask to get back up to where he was. Them softs will die off after about four or five laps, I would say. But I'm surprised probably with Biddle and Oblaf trying not to take um, advantage of knowing our pit and you know they get on the same sorry even better li tire life on a new set of mediums because I think if they pitted the whole rest of the field would have followed him behind and left Noah very vulnerable yeah they obviously think that they've got good tire wear um, and uh, personally I would have probably pitted in that situation but um, you know they have they both haven't got any penalties they have got they probably would have come out around 10th place um and they did have three drives in front with penalties so they probably wouldn't have lost out much by going on them fresher sets um unless they haven't actually got any fresh sets and they used them up throughout the weekend um but this is going to be exciting last nine laps of the grand prix um let's see if noah can take his first ever FPL win. Um, was Biddle going to get his first win in the season? Um, who knows? Um, yeah, it's going to be exciting. But um, well done to Cruz for sticking up into P5. But again, it's quite surprising that Cruz didn't pick because he, him and Eagle on the older tyres, especially Biddle, 15 laps, Eagle's on 16, and midfield and Cruz and Eagle were both on 16 laps. So um, them tyres are going to be pretty jank towards the end. Well, we do have a bit of inside information from Gary, who's been saying the cruiser was told that rain's inbound in 10 minutes. 
So if that is the case, we're looking near enough the last couple of laps where rain could be trying to take effect on this race. So that's probably the reason why they actually haven't pitted, just trying to make it out to that rain and make the call then. Well, Gary saying 10 minutes, got Fish saying 15 minutes. So let's have a look who's the best weatherman out of both of them. Um, Liam and chat has said he got wing damage. He got put into the wall, so that's why he had to pit. Um, so yeah, he was on for a good result. But it's just a shame that um, it didn't look like he had much wing damage, even if he did, because it didn't really show. Um, maybe it would have been worth just staying out. Um, being a little bit slower, but still getting that track position. Obviously around here with the wing, you're probably only going to suffer really the most in sector one. The rest you can just keep in front. But Noah uh, is going to take a restart again. This is the second time um, of this race, um, starting from first and doing a safe car restart. Did it brilliantly in the first in the first one. So let's see if he catches Biddle out. Uh, but let's just see how much tyre wear he's going to have. He did gain a four second gap and he's lost that all. So let's see if he can gain that back. He's going to have to because he's got that penalty. So, um, yeah, cross if you want to just take the viewers around for the first lap after the safety car. Yeah, so just waiting on Noah now to dictate the pace when he wants to go, if he can catch it out to Biddle. Most likely he's going to go on the exit. And as I say that, he goes now and Biddle hasn't been caught out whatsoever. But Eagle's been caught out. All last went with Biddle. It looks like he got pretty clean throughout the front feet, part of the field. Looking back towards the back of the field, looks pretty clean. Getting back towards the front, Noah's been able to hold off Biddle. It looks like all last pretty much a very clean start from everyone in the field so far. Looks like Cruiser's having a little look at Eagle. Nothing doing there. Eagle's been able to defend that one so far. On down back in the field, we have midfield Maestro under pressure from Diamond. He just stays in behind for an eye. Obviously, no DRS as we have a uh, Ferrari at the back of the field of Hirsch. He must have spun it, maybe hit the wall. Towards the front of the field, looks like Noah's already got a 1.5 second gap. Who Biddle is under a bit of pressure from Oblav. Who can Oblav be able to get past Biddle down this back uh, straight? Obviously, without the DRS, but with the battery help, he's went then slightly deep there. He will have a slight better exit on Biddle, will get the slipstream. So, well, just under th or about three and a half tenths back, he is going to gain. So here he is still gaining. Will he go inside or outside? Or not even going to go for it at all. Just wasn't close enough. Bill has been able to defend that, but already there was a two second gap. Yep, so um, pretty much stalemate throughout them, um, throughout the restart. Um, you were saying Hirsch and Roomaster in the wall. I think Hirsch spun it. Uh, Roomaster did go in, so he's lost half his front wing, but he has decided to keep going around. Um, yeah, and I think Liam Liam is also missing an and then play again. So he's been in the wall somewhere. Maybe him and Roomaster did come a cropper together, being out the back. But Monkey Boy now coming to P10, so he's made his way up into uh, the points positions. Um, and I wonder if these people who um, DNF'd early um, are kicking themselves, people like more leader and Lexus, due to having the two safety cars that we've had. Um, Yorkie's managed to get himself up into P9. He's had a bit of a lonely race um, so far, not much action from him. Um, Diamond Douche though has made his way up into P7 in the Alpine. Um, it's fighting with midfield Marshall in front, so um, with that three second penalty in a minute, it's going to take him outside, well, not outside the top 10, but into P9. Liam does pick up another three second penalty. Um, Biddle and Oblaf both are not on penalties, and midfield Marshall. So, midfield Marshall at the minute is on course to nearly get a, a podium so he needs to get past Cruz ASAP if he wants that possible uh, not sure what happened to Monkey there I think Monkey's had a wobble somewhere cross he's lost two positions yeah something must have happened with him but I don't know if you can see it but I think I might be able to see a few spits of rain as Monkey loses the back end again obviously them rear tyres have been overheated and struggling Spittle picks up the three second time penalty it's not what he wanted that's allowed Noah now to actually have that three second gap on the field. So Oblak needs to get past Biddle and try to reel in a little bit on Noah to try to get something 
I try to get the race win just based on the time penalties. We will have a chance now with the DRS this time with the battery. It'll be a pretty simple move. Just decides to go to the inside, but it'll try to block the middle of the road. Trying to force all off which way he wanted to go, but simple move done. We will get the DRS towards the start finish line just to make sure of it. Biddle won't stand a chance there. Biddle actually hits the wall. Has he got any damage? It looks like he might have got away with it. He will be slightly under pressure from Eagle. It doesn't look like Eagle's going to look for that one. Now it's all the pressure's on the one out. 3.1 seconds ahead, but crucially, Oblaf doesn't have the time penalty. Yeah, so let's see if Oblaf can do the double, get the sprint and the race win. Um, he's just outside that three second gap. Um, Liam picks up another three second penalty, but I just did go on board with Noah. I couldn't see any rain drops on the screen coming up at all. I think if it does rain, it will be towards the last couple of laps. But at the minute, he's doing the job. He's just got to make sure he doesn't get another three second penalty. Diamond Douche has picked up his other penalty now. So let's have a look. Diamond's on nine. So it's. Uh, he's still not going to drop him outside the top 10. We've got sector two. Uh, we have a horse round. And we do have Monkey, unfortunately, has gone a cropper at that corner. So he has had a spin. Um, unfortunately, he was in the top 10. But um, he's now fallen back after a couple of spins. Um, we've got Fado still going around with 19 seconds at the back. But, yep, it's gonna be, um, looks like Oblaf has kept that. Um, oh, and it is raining. I think. Yeah, it looks like it might be a few spits. It's better look down the inside of our blast towards turn one. That's just going to allow that gap as a safety car out on track. So that's exactly Fardo. not what Noah needed. No, and Fardo did crash. So um, he shouldn't have been there anyway. But, yep. Are we going to see people coming for wet tyres? Is it going to rain enough? This is the question. And it's going to be a massive, massive headache for these drivers to see what one's the fastest. We're going to be under the safety car for, well, we're going to have one flying, two flying laps. That is it. So is it worth pitting for wet tyres? Well, Who knows? Hirsch has took that gamble. And to be honest, it's a gamble worth taking. Obviously, the lap time's a lot slower. So that's just going to allow a little bit more rain to fall on the track. Maybe once we get back onto racing, though it is dry now, maybe enters could be... Uh, the better tyre once we do get back under race and as I say we do have two flying laps so it should be just one lap under the safety car once Noah does catch up but I can't see any of these front runners pitting it's just such a big risk to take they'll probably most likely just wave it out to the end if it does even get a bit heavier but you know the guys that are outside of the points might be a risk worth taking someone like Monkey and Rue yeah we've got Cruz in oh Liam's in oh uh -huh. <laughs> just caught that. How the hell did he do that? Coming into the pits. Looks like he's locked oh. up the rear tyres and it's just set well, him into the wall and reset him. It was reset him outside the track though. It's back on the main straight. With wing damage, that's not what he needed. But we see Cruiser and Mongo both in for the intermediate, so they're happy enough to take this gamble. Yeah, Monkey's coming in for intermediates. You've got Rumas coming in for a front wing change on intermediates. And Hirsch is obviously pit on the intermediate so he's going to jump uh is he going to jump anyone it's going to be close with monkey is Hurst going to make it no he didn't so monkey still stays to p12 so let's see cross is going to be after this lap i think the safety car is going to be in so it does look like it's getting heavier has cruz liam well, not, not Liam, sorry, but Cruz, Mongo, Monkey and Hirsch made the right strategy call here. Because if they do, uh, they're going to be passing these people like no other. Well, it doesn't look too wet out on track at the minute, but that could easily change within the next lap or two. But crucially, though, Mongo and Cruz have been able to catch up to the pack. Monkey and Hirsch and Remaster doesn't look like they're going to be able to. This gamble wouldn't have really paid off for them. So, now it's two laps of hard racing, no safety cars, no VSCs, in the wet, on slick tyres. Who takes it? I think, I think Monkey's just caught up the back now. Yes, he has. They've both just caught up. I think Rumas is just going <laughs> to miss it. But Noah's got another brilliant start now. Oblaf has also kept the position. Monkey 
has gone up to P11 with Liam now pitting. So let's see. I thought it was going on Wetson. No. So let's see if this track at the minute we obviously we saw in the sprint race that Oblath likes the wet conditions. He was very, very strong. Um, got stronger and stronger over the course of the race. Uh, but these slick tyres look like they're holding out pretty good at the minute. Biddle looks like he's struggling a lot more than others. Um, it's going to be down to him being on more worn tyres. Um, the midfield marshal at the minute is on course of getting a, a podium. Um, oh, looking a bit slippery out there now. Um, let's have a look at these intermediate runners. They do look like they're getting up to speed. Monkey's gone for the move on Mongo. Brilliant move there. Is it going to get Cruz? Oh. Nope. So uh, P10 for Monkey's making his way up still. But these intermediate ties, they may come in to effect on the last lap only. Yeah, it's just it's, not uh, yeah. going to be enough. But Noah's had a massive moment through the last few games. Thankfully, he's been able to keep it out of the wall. But that's just allowed Oblak to just claw back in that time. Nifkin Maestro has got that three second time penalty, so that's dampened his podium hopes. And crucially, though, DRS is still enabled. So the, uh, the slick tyres are still the tyres to be on. Yep, Cruz is going for a move on Yorkie. Yorkie's on the mediums, Cruz is on the intermediate tyres. Um, very hard to keep up what we're doing now, but Noah hasn't got that gap, unfortunately. Looks like he's just going to miss out on that P1, but at the minute he's going to go P2. And we've got Yorkie. Yorkie's had a moment, weed damage. That's going to prop Monkey Boy up into P8. Cruz, it looks like he may have come a cropper with Cruz. Got Hirsch and Yorkie fighting. Maybe Yorkie half a wing missing. And now he's coming on to the back straight now for the last couple of corners of the Canadian Grand Prix. Is Oblaf going to take? the victory on merit yes he has he has overtaken Noah the patience is key and Oblaf comes around the last corner to take the win in the Canadian Grand Prix in the main race is Noah's finished second who's gonna be third midfield marshal finished third oh Groundsy finished third oh my god that come out of nowhere Groundsy finished third midfield marshal fourth Biddle fifth Eagle 6, Crew 7, Yorkie 8, Diamond 9th, Hirsch 10th, got Mongo 11th, Monk, oh, Monk, who's retired? Oh, Yorkie, uh, Monkey 11th, Crewmaster 12th, and Liam's going to come across 14th. We need to start to cross. So, Groundsy come out of nowhere and finish P3. Yeah, it just showed how crucial it is not to get pick up the time penalties. I think he was down P7 or P8 at the time, obviously, the late safety car helped him there. And it's just light him to get the podium out of nowhere. So, mi so midfield marshal must have got a penalty on the last lap because he was in front, I believe. Yeah, I think he picked up the penalty just as we got on to the last lap. I think it was actually the Wall of Champions chicane. So there you go, guys. Um, Oblaf is our winner across both races. Um, he takes a maximum of 33 points. Um, you got Granty in P2. I oh, know that's not the wrong one. So race, we've got Oblaf in P1. Um, fast lap goes to Noah with 111.60. Finishes P2 on 19 points. Got ground C P3. Um, come out of nowhere. Started 11th. But managed to fit it on the podium, so he's going to be happy. Midfield Marshall again, P4. Biddle P5 is going to be really disappointed with that. Um, he had really good effort there by Biddle, but I, I believe he's going to feel a bit disappointed in himself after obviously starting on pole. Um, Eagle finishes P6, exactly where he started. P7 is Cruz. P8 is Diamond. Uh, we've got Hirsch, P9, who ended up from last to ninth, so very good position in the end. And the last paying points go to Mongo. Unfortunately, Monkey Boy just missed out. You know, that was a great finish to the end of that race, obviously, with the rain coming in. Just that little bit of strategy change. Maybe if you had a couple of more laps, it all could have been a lot different. Yeah, it, 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 it's one of them. We've all been in that situation where you think it's going to rain um, and it doesn't. Um, 
uh, like me last year, I took the gamble in Spa when I thought it was going to rain and it didn't. And I was running P1 and I ended up, I think, outside the points at the end. So it's, it's one of them things where it, it could say it's going to absolutely chuck it down and it's just one lap shy of what you want it to be. But the intermediate tyres did look like it stuck out a little bit. Um, as you can see with Hirsch moving up into the points. Monkey nearly getting points. Um, but yeah, very, very entertaining race. Um, hopefully, we don't get any rain on Friday, cross <laughs> uh, Hoping that's the case. Well, hmm. and maybe I actually need it just to actually maybe improve my pace personally from what it has been. But um, with all the tier races so far being wet in some kind of way i would probably expect the same for tier ones on a friday so we're just waiting for the other gentlemen to join i'm not too sure if they're going to join or not um I'll give them if one they more don't chance. and if they don't then we we'll, we can do a double interview for noah um and depending on who your driver of the day is, Cross Cree, we can always invite them in to speak if the other two gents don't want to. Doesn't look like they're going to join at all. No, well, that's fine. Um, so, Noah, well done. Congratulations. I know in the end, the safety car just didn't work in your favour in the end um, obviously the second one um, and the third um, but as soon as where you started um, I think you saw it P8 or 9 wasn't it correct um, P2 is not a bad overall position in the race Sorry, Noah. Could you just include your audio? It's yeah, just not coming through. <laughs> um. Anyway, as I was saying, um, I got, I started on the halves. Obviously, uh, I was hoping to pit a bit later than I did, but um, yeah, obviously that safety car came in early. Uh, I got an unlucky uh, three-second time penalty, which wasn't what I wanted, and that would have probably given me a bit more chance at the end of the race. But yeah, overall, I solid race to, but the safety cars did screw me over a little bit um, when the second safety car obviously come out um, how close was you to pitted was your mind saying pit for fresh mediums which would have obviously gone definitely gone you to the end or did you did you have a moment when you was like oh I've got to stay out <laughs> uh, yeah um, I mean as it came to that second safety car, um, I was coming up to the pit entry and I had everybody behind me. I was trying to like slow a bit down to see what everybody else would do, but I was in two minds. I didn't know what to do, so I just I thought, don't risk it and just stay out. Yeah, I think the uh, yeah, best thing for you to do was to stay out yeah. in the end, obviously, because everyone behind you didn't pit. But if you pitted, I reckon it could have made a continued effect with everyone pitting after. Um, when the rain started, did you expect it to get a little bit wetter, or did you know it was going to be quite light rain, and that's why you stayed out on the softer tyres? Yeah, I knew it was going to be uh, light rain, but obviously uh, we know the mediums are faster than the hards in wet conditions so um i knew i'd have a bit more grip but i wasn't going to risk it and go in for inters because the crossover point wasn't going to be until well if there was another five laps on the race i would have pitted but obviously there wasn't so is there anything else you would like to speak to um know about cross creek i think you pretty much covered it. it's just mainly looking forward now to next week after this race win Silverstone, I know that's a favourite track for a lot of drivers. Is it one of your favourites? And if so, how do you think you'll get on then? Um, yeah, Silverstone's it's one of the mediocre tracks, really. I don't, I'm not one of the fastest, but I'm definitely not one of the slowest around it. So I look forward to that. Yeah, I'm happy enough. Ads, congratulations, man, on your P2. Just unlucky it got stolen away from you in that last safety car. 
Yeah, cheers, mate. Yeah, yeah so thanks. congratulations, thanks. Noah. Um, and hopefully you'll come back in Silverstone with an even better result. Um, Crosscree, who is your co-com sort of driver of the, the, the day? I think I actually have to give it to Noah. Although Oblaf has dominated the whole weekend, but just think Noah played the perfect game, went long on the hards at the start of the race. Yes, got a bit lucky with the safety car to get perfect timing, allowed him to box and get back out in the lead. It was seen even between the safety cars. He's able to get three, four seconds on the rest of the field. Sadly, the last safety car stole it on him, but I think he still had a great drive and a great P2. Yep, I think I agree with you there. So congratulations, Noah. You are um, FBRL driver of the day for tier two. Um, so we're going to leave you guys with it um uh, friday is our next race 8 p.m it's going to be uh, for a tier one race um hopefully we will see you there everyone please have a good evening bye for now bye